just okay. Thank you. Uh, similar to what uh, Young Simon has just uh, done. So this question is, is about the questions, new ideas, plans, and problem solving. Um, well, um, so, for, so this is a bi-directional. You can ask questions to me, and I will probably also throw um, throw one simple, it's not simple, but a, a questions to you. And uh, so it's a very simple question, right? So what is the software defined? It, it, it doesn't matter whether it's a vehicle or not. But what do you, uh, how do you understand the software defined um, in your opinion? Okay. So I, I will give everyone about uh, three minutes for, for thinking about this. And after that, I can I just uh, randomly pick up some someone. <laughs> To, to give a, a, a short answer. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, you need to use the mic. So we can yeah, yeah. You need minutes, to. Three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, young Simon? Young so. Yeah, work with, with maybe two minutes. I'm trying to find it. Oh, okay. okay. We'll display it as soon as possible. Okay. For the previous question, I think it's uh, it's okay that uh, oh, sorry, um, it's okay that you you stand in your company's position or you you stand in the end user position. What kind of uh, vehicle? How the software can empower the vehicle to enhance your life? So it, it's up to you. It's a a, a a relatively open question. is uh, over. Let me first ask what. What am I going to do? <laughs> the question is, uh, what, what, how do you think a soft, what, uh, software defined vehicle, what software defined vehicle in your mind? What software defined vehicle in my mind? So yeah, the other day, um, it's a no, very overloaded term in my mind. Okay. Uh, um, so I liked, uh, I think it was uh, Murata San during the advisory board meeting said, he would prefer the term uh, software-defined cockpit or um, software-defined IVI system. Um, but I, I think depending on who you talk to in the industry, it could be you know, you're, you're changing the services and you're changing the, the workload for the entire vehicle, not just the cockpit part. Um, I guess I'm still on the fence as to what, you know, there's some, I, you know, I, in fact, we were just talking to Matt, he's still here. Um, there's some talk of this, this grand scheme where, you know, in the cloud, you're going to be defining, uh, you're gonna be defining the, you know, how the, how the various uh, workloads are, are deployed to, in the vehicle, and you're gonna be doing that it sounds like maybe on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And I'm still a little, um, conf I'm, I won't say confused, I'm still a little doubtful as to how that's gonna work in the real world where uh, connectivity isn't necessarily ubiquitous. And, and definitely, you know, I, I live in the mountains of North Carolina and, you know, even high speed Ubiqu even high-speed connectivity in people's homes is certainly not ubiquitous. So um, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to understand how, you know, like what happens when, when the car is in an area for weeks or maybe for its entire lifespan where it never sees a high-speed connection. Um, so 
So, I mean, I, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great, you know, vision. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm just always trying to figure out in the real world how it's going to work. Uh, even, even five to 10 years from now, looking at, you know, the speed of processors and the speed of connectivity in the world. Um, anyway, that, that's kind of my, those, those are my kind of doubts about SDV there more than, you know, what it means to me. Because cars, I mean, let's face it, cars at the end of the day, you buy a car and it's, um, and Matt said something during his talk that was interesting. You know, the, 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 the automakers want to monetize the vehicle throughout its lifespan. And there's been a lot of pushback from consumers of, you know, well, I forget what vehicle it was, maybe Jan Simon remembers. There was a vehicle that, there was a vehicle recently that wanted to charge for cruise control on a monthly basis which is insanity. You know, you buy a car, you expect the cruise control to be there for its life, not have to pay every month for it. Um, so anyway, that's my, uh, that's my two cents on okay, thank SDV. You. So I forget what manufacturer it was. Matt's got a, oh, great. That's so I, I agree with most, most of what you said. I don't agree with the, the daily update. I don't think that's going to happen um, at all. Um, I think software-defined vehicle could enable that, but I, I don't think the industry needs it. I, I don't think it's going to happen either. That's kind of why. That's kind of what my yeah my point there. I don't think it's going to happen, or it needs to happen. But I, so I think the questions we need to ask is what is software-defined vehicle trying to, to solve, yes. and why? I, I think the why is easy, and it goes to, to what Walt was saying. It's about how do we enable the automotive industry not to go bankrupt because cars are so expensive to produce anymore. Right, so it's about how do we enable business models, innovative business models, after the car has been solved. sold. Right, so as it rolls off the, uh, off the forecourt of the garage, right, how, do, how do the OEMs monetize that vehicle over the, the course of its life? And how do we extend the, 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 the life uh, of the vehicle? The impact of that is going to be that it could be that every single vehicle on the road from a software perspective is different. Right? There will be some core services like brakes, right? That's, that's probably going to be consistent. Steering, that's probably going to be consistent. But when it comes to the unique specializations and additional features that the individuals have added to that vehicle, what does that mean to the complexity of how we manage the quality of deployment of that software-defined vehicle? Right? We've got a million, million vehicles and they're running a million different combinations of software. Right? That, that is going to be difficult. So how do we put the tools, the best practices in place to enable that ultimate end goal? I think the short term will be we don't because it's not possible. I think the short term will be you will have profiles of configuration that you can buy into. But the ultimate end goal is that I want my dashboard to have Hello Kitty on it. Right? I should be allowed to have that. Um, with, with a different styling of speed dials and, and, and whatever else. But testing that, safety qualifying that, what does that mean and how do we guarantee that? Uh, and software, defi software defined, back to the original question, means not hardware defined in, in my mind. Right? Portability has to be there. We shouldn't have to target software for a specific um, system architecture or even micro architecture. Right? I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I work for ARM, right? hands up, I work for ARM. Like, I understand that there's an interest here in, in, in Risk Five, and that's very healthy. Right? But how do we make sure that the software that gets written doesn't have to target a specific microarchitecture? So we have a very technical guy commenting a lot of uh, very interesting ideas. But now, Emily, no. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you what do you think uh, in ten years? What kind of car you would like have? Do you have? Have any ideas? Um, are you asking me from like a consumer perspective? Yes. I mean, I'm not a super technical person. Like in my it's daily, not yeah. Need I to mean, tech. being able to update my software over the air, right? Like that's still kind of not accessible to most people on lower level vehicles, for example. Um, you know, it's a lot of like the the like added bonus features of like the driver assistance, the ADAS stuff that like help in like daily life. Um, 
the convenience of being able to pair your phone and mirror it, you know, like for me, that's the stuff that I use every day that kind of makes a difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you want a continuous upgradable uh, vehicle, just like yep. your smartphone. Yep. That's cool. And Monata san do you have any <laughs> ideas? So my feeling that, you know, the software defined does not immediately mean the cloud connected because a uh, modern car has many configurable menus, like uh, steering speed and uh, how you can support it by the, the vehicle st the stability control kind of thing. It's, it's, uh, it's selectable right now. So that kind of configurability. And uh, if such kind of configuration is uh, dynamically changed, it's a bit hard for the OEM company to secure the quality and something. So the manageability, it means uh, the which ECU box is uh, in place and uh, which version of software is uh, running. So that kind of the dynamic configuration management is getting very, very serious to comply with uh, some kind of like industry regulation stuff. So, but basically, the, maybe long time ago, so that if you buy the, any, even the consumer products, the consumer electric product, so if you buy the product, that's it, no, no chance to improve. But now if you buy the new phones, maybe you're expecting some new format will be supported in the future. So the car is the same thing. So because if you buy a new car, and if you buy the latest phone after two years, so that is not by originally supported, but in future, it will be supported sometime later. So this kind of upgradability, configurability, and the manageability should be the key for the SDB concept. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Updatability, flexibility, dynamic configuration. And what about you? <laughs> I'm going to just point it out from a customer's perspective again, and many of it has already been covered, but uh, a developer come customer as people can uh, customize their cars right now uh, in terms of hardwares, they can have multiple colors or configurable tires. I would want to have my car where I can develop my own applications and directly run through my car. It's like, it should say, uh, if I want to have a customized application developed, I develop it and directly deploy it on the car. Mm -hmm. And that should be my own. So that sort of a car would be something which I would imagine for the next five to 10 years from a customer's perspective. And you want to, you want to customize your own car with your own application? Yes. Cool. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, that's a, a open discussion um, for fun. I mean, when you look at SDV2, I'd be curious to see how how can we use this with for AGL to differentiate against like Android Android Automotive OS, right? Because like when a customer, when somebody's buying a car, they're looking 10 years in advance. My phone might change. I don't know what the next 10 years is going to hold for me or my devices, but the flexibility of AGL or something or the ability to not be locked into you know, a specific consumer device based on my car. So how can we add more flexibility for the future? Mm -hmm. okay. I, I, I'd like to take a stab at that, if I may. Um, I, I, I personally think that in the short term, I think it's inevitable that Android Automotive is going to be there because it's, it's almost a turnkey solution for a lot of the OEMs. And it's when, when senior management are looking down at, at what it is they're going to put in vehicles, it's almost you're not going to lose your job if you decide to go Android Automotive. I think the long-term prospects for those OEMs that go Android Automotive is that they're going to lose the ability to monetize software-defined vehicle going forwards. Their ability to generate additional revenue streams from the new software features that are going to be deployed to that vehicle. So I think short-term, it's going to be an Android Automotive. I think long-term is an AGL play. Um, where you can create the story that says you have the ability to enable the OEMs to monetize the platform that they have because as, as we have that hockey stick of complexity of software, more of the cost of a vehicle is expressed in software. The OEMs need to be able to work out how they can claw back that, that cost but not on day one of purchase because if you do it on day one of purchase, then you price yourself out of the market. Phones, oh sorry, cars are gonna end up more like the phone market where you buy a car on a subscription service because nobody wants to pay that one and a half thousand dollars to buy, well, I don't want to pay one and a half thousand dollars to buy an iPhone when I know that in a year's time there'll be a prettier iPhone come around, but I'll do it through a contract with, 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 a, with a provider. 
I, I think that kind of model is where the, the automotive world is going, and AGL enables that. I don't think Android Auto does. My disagreement with that would be that when you buy a phone, you expect to get rid of it in three years. When I buy a car, I expect to have it for 10 to 15 years, and I expect that I'll eventually pay it off, and I'll, it'll be free for you know some period of time. Um, so I, I just was thinking before, when we, were, when we were first having this conversation, when I graduated from college back in the 80s, um, I bought my first brand new car and it was $9,000. And I thought, wow, how am I ever going to afford a nice car which cost like fifteen dollars to $18,000? Um, and now those nice cars are thirty dollars to $40,000. Um, and, and the car payment is you know, astronomical. So, um, but you expect to keep, so, so paying that much, even on a subscription model, I wouldn't want to always be having a car payment. Um, and I don't, I don't know how you convince, you know, your, your older generation that that's the way to go. That's another kind of thing yeah, I was it, thinking yeah, about. It, it could be a generational thing. I, I think you're right. But I, I think we have to look at the economics of, of the automotive space. Cars are becoming more complex and, and more costly uh, to produce. But the consumers don't want to pay the upfront cost of a vehicle on, on day one. So I think there are going to be innovative business models that, that have to be produced. Um, and it, it, it could be that the whole, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the OEMs are not want to hear something like this, but it could be that we end up going to a robo-taxi model where no one ends up owning a vehicle and it's, it, it's shared um, ownership. You know, that, that would be the, the kind of more liberal tree-hugging route, uh, route to take. I do think that people like the idea of ownership, though, so I, there will be innovative business models that I don't think a closed ecosystem like Android Automotive enables the OEMs to create the business models that they need in order to survive. So I think that's where AGL win. Uh, that, that I completely agree with, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I have a few uh, points about um, uh, software defined. Uh, first of all, actually, uh, today, yeah, software defined vehicle. So we are talking about car, but uh, that software defined means um, various things like uh, cloud native or open source or actually use uh, reuse of the components, uh, including code, uh, efficiency, short development, time, easy, uh, many things. Then actually, I think the software defined something can be for everything, not only just a vehicle, like uh, IO, IoT or industry products, like uh, camera-based products, or uh, I don't know if um, maybe some uh, uh, the products with uh, uh, heavy development requires can be um, the software defined that takes advantage of uh, the yeah, SD. And maybe, I don't know, if uh, consumer electronics like um, yeah, TV or Blu-ray products can be also, yeah, as the CPU power goes kind of higher and higher, then the software can be really yeah, flexible and take advantage of it. And also, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the user of a car, I want is a safety as a, the, the top right priority. And also second priority for me is kind of low cost. And I think a software defined vehicle can help that because actually um, the short development cycle, also the low uh, resources, that makes the, the, the development cost of the making car goes low. That means the cost of the car can go low. Yeah, that is also helps. And of course, actually the upgradability, uh, I always want to use kind of latest uh, features, functions, then uh, yeah, software defined is really uh, perfect for the future. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any uh, yeah, yeah. Hello, uh, I, uh, in our company just defined the SDV means the, uh, that software defined, yeah, just a service defined, yeah. So my, yeah, my, uh, also our perspective a little bit different than they're described, so, uh, okay, so, 
Yeah, that's all. Okay. <laughs> Service defined. Very cool word. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of aspirational stuff being talked about here, but I think if we're realistic in the it. short term, I think a focus okay. should be what I believe most of the OEMs are interested in, which is reduction and cost of software development. And things like monetization strategies and stuff are, you know, that's, that's pretty forward looking. And I, I think, at least from what I've seen, the, the consumers are not, the consumer market's not interested in that today. Um, there's a huge amount of pushback whenever any of these things are you know, sort of put out by any of the manufacturers as a, as a test. So I think it would be better for us in the next few years to focus on what of these technologies can we enable that make the OEM's life easier and actually allow them to develop faster and cheaper as opposed to really shooting for the moon from the get-go. I think it's there's definitely a need to sit down and pick a strategy that enables faster development, cheaper development. Um, so that's kind of my take on how this stuff should go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I, I some feel like um, the image or concept of SDV could be somehow blur, and so uh, everyone has the um, not same image about that. So, from OEM perspective or tier one perspective or user perspective, they could have different image about that, so yeah, that could be the big problem to do this kind of discussion. Yeah, I feel so. Thank you. What kind of car do you want in 10 years? Wow. Uh, a big hybrid. A big hybrid? What's the reason? So I can haul a lot of gear uh -huh. and not be reliant on um, one power source. Okay, cool. And what about you? Uh, what kind of car do I want in 10 years? Uh -huh. Something that is safe, something that drives very sporty, and um, something that has a lot of comfort. Oh, cool, comfort. Yeah. Any ideas? What kind of car do you want in 10 years? That flies. <laughs> flies? Yeah. And it's safe and it's cheap. OK, thank you. Either from technical uh, oh. point of views or from the user point of view. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the, uh, my sp speaker is to uh, listen to her. Uh, I, I, uh, I have no idea about uh, SVG, uh, but uh, I think it is a uh, previous stage of uh, autonomous software. Uh, uh, it is uh, real, uh, I don't think uh, it is realized by uh, anything. Uh, maybe uh, uh, auto, uh, Artificial intelligence uh, 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 and, and, and other various technologies, um, but uh, SDV is uh, too many uh, configuration and uh, need uh, to dynamically configuration. Uh, it, uh, it will be need to autonomous configuration. Okay. Future. <laughs> Thank you. Autonomous uh, computation, or so more dynamic uh, computation across different uh, computing units. What's your opinion? Thank you, Jerry uh, I, I, I think about a software-defined vehicle. 
basically, uh, in the world, uh, there are a lot of various color type. For example, the number of is sock and displays. Uh, so uh, a lot of people I use uh, want to uh, want to take a personalized uh, cockpit UI UX. Uh, so uh, OTA update uh, should be personalized to, to a driver and guest. Uh, so uh, software-defined vehicle re realize uh, uh, quickly updated to, to personalized uh, vehicle type. Uh, so I think a software-defined vehicle development style can be uh, realized uh, in the future. Okay, thank you. And Carlos, do you have any? Yeah, um, this is not the STV definition, but I think the STV has to have the characteristic of the easy to collaboration um, because the uh, engineer of the software in automotive industry is not so much, so we have to collaborate and make it efficiency. Yeah. Thank you. So that's a very important part to have an ecosystem to achieve this kind of thing. Uh, okay, <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that in, because in, in my company, I always talk about this idea and I think I can share interesting things that uh, we always say that as a man, uh, we work, so we in office. Uh, we take uh, with my family at home, but in future, we think that the car will be my, the third space as a man. In this space, you could enjoy yourself in the space, and you could take it easy. You can listen, um, listen music, see movies, and uh, on the road, everything is very, became easy, and the car will be your assistant just like a smart assistant. In it, you can um, get everything, get every message you want. It could help you for your home, it could help you for the work, and your future, just last, last model language, last language, language model. Now it's very, it's very popular now. Maybe we can think that the LLM will help us understand the car, the car will understand us, just like in corporate, cooperation on the road. So we think that the car will be smart and smart and as a c c assistant with us. Okay. Okay, a car that can understand and assist us. Thank you. Uh, I'm not a professional of uh, automotive, but uh, uh, the meaning of the software defined is everything is driven by the software, not depending on the hardware. So as much as possible, we the system should not depend on the hardware. So everything can be configured and also the, uh, oh, everything should be configured uh, from the development phase to the uh, testing phase. Everything can be tested on uh, some, some infrastructure that can be run on top of every other uh, some kind of uh, uh, hardware platform that can that would be uh, software defined. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a completely software should be decoupled from hardware. It can be running on hopefully hopefully every hardware. Yeah. Cool. My point, you know, when I was, uh, when, I, when I hear the software defined, I came up with software defined network. It is uh, how do you uh, switch and router compared to the software. So maybe we can, if all the traditional discussion on the technology, I think. Okay, thank you. Something a little bit maybe related to the software defined network, but it's an extension of the concept. Uh, I think software-defined vehicle 
is related to with software first uh, in the free. Yeah, I think it is a turning point uh, to make a cars. So in software defined big uh, term, yeah, we uh, we make uh, software first, firstly, and uh, hardware is uh, should be made uh, to run the uh, software. Yeah. So <laughs> sorry, my bad English. Yeah, it's my opinion. Yeah. So software first and hardware second to, to create software first and then uh, have the hardware accommodate the uh, software yes. appropriately. Okay. Cool. I think uh, the development time of software is very shorter and shorter. So the, the separate of development is very important. So uh, Kato-san said, uh, separate the part of everyone's development part and uh, agile and uh, agile and very high speed development is enabled uh, by software defined. Okay, thank you. So in my opinion, the software defined vehicle is not a special word and special development style. So because uh, <coughs> before the SDP, uh, the case is uh, one of the uh, famous word, and that includes uh, connectivity and autonomous and so on, and also SDB, uh, uh, SDB uh, including these words, and so the SDB is not so especially word. However, <coughs> uh, before everyone said uh, the update capability and software first, so these uh, leading more convenience uh, development style and so uh, autonomous industry have to uh, continue to struggle uh, more convenience automotive 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 development. So uh, sorry, that is my opinion. So let's go with uh, one more comment and then uh, I think we're, we're out of time. So one more comment and then we can continue the discussion during the uh, dinner event uh, yeah. a little later on. So who wants to go last? Who wants to wrap us up with a comment? <laughs> Jerry? OK, so if no, then <laughs> maybe me. OK, I, I think uh, you can see the software-defined vehicle is a really, really a wide concept that everyone probably interpreted in, into different ways. But when I think uh, as a automotive developer, we always need to take the end user or say uh, the driver and the passengers in the car, the user of the car into the consideration. As some uh, one has already mentioned, we would like to have a cheaper car <laughs> or, or, or a cheaper driving, uh, whether it is you are, you're renting a car or you're buying a car and we would like to have our car really uh, updatable, continuous updatable, weekly or monthly or whatever, something like your smartphone, uh, keep it as fancy for, for all the time. You can play the uh, different kind of stuff uh, directly on your, uh, your vehicle. And someone also mentioned that uh, we would like to have our car to be more understanding ourselves and uh, also assisting ourselves or say we can we, we really would like to have our, our car to be a friend of us i think this are all very key concept uh, of what kind of software we, we software defined then then we, we need to think about what kind of values those kind of uh, software can be deliver and the, 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 the conversation uh, here today is really, really meaningful to uh, get a draft of 
this kind of uh, uh, direction. And I think the older uh, technology, like the dynamic or flexible or, or, um, or, or across uh, hardware computation, uh, decoupling software from hardware, that's all the method or, uh, or the um, approaches to achieve the, the values uh, that we really want to deliver to the end users. Okay, and I think uh, we can probably summarize the, uh, the, the different voices of this um, uh, conversations and uh, continue the discussion in SDVEG. Thank you.